Hey there, this is Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook, and I am coming to you live, well, live right now anyway, from the fabulous in the Indianapolis International Airport. And I wanted to share with you some of the cool things that have come out related to Flipgrid. Flipgrid is one of my uh, favorite tools to use in the classroom right now. It is all about video response. You know, in a nutshell, what Flipgrid is, is it's a way that uh, teachers can pose a prompt or a question, and then students respond with a quick video message, and then students are able to respond to each other's video messages with other video messages, with replies. And um, this summer, there were a bunch of new changes released, and so I wanted to highlight some of those changes and then some of the things that we can do with them in the classroom. So the first one has to do with the new recorder and player. So they have kind of like rethought the whole idea of what the camera looks like. One of the things that I think is really cool about it is that now you're able to switch between horizontal and vertical during a video. And so if students are using their mobile devices to record and they start out with their camera and horizontal and then they switch to vertical at some point, then it modifies and it goes with them. I think this is this is going to be an, it's going to be neat to see how students use this to you know further create the art of their videos so to speak. So I could even see someone starting with you know portrait mode talking and then they want to show something that's happening behind them and so they switch it to landscape and what's going on behind them is more of a horizontal thing then they switch it back to a vertical. The other thing that's cool related to the recorder is just the simple idea that you can now trim videos. And so what you can see here is I have this exciting video of myself <laughs> staring at my computer. But what I can do is I can take the trim buttons here at the beginning and the end and I can cut a little bit of my video off the beginning, a little bit off the end. And then what I can even do if I want to is click this add more button. And then when I do that, I'm able to put more video onto the end. So again, just these nice features that let us slice and dice up our videos and make them exactly what they want pretty good stuff. So another thing we can do with student videos is to add these things called vibes. So vibes are basically what you see here on the screen. It's just like a little tag that you can put up at the top of a video so that whenever you're looking at it as a student, you can see right here, there's one that says brilliant, one that says creative and all of that. And so, so if we look at these vibes, it's really just as easy as when you're viewing a student video, you click on it and then you can say, something, you know, whatever it is that you want to type, and then you put it right up there up at the top. So I could see a variety of different ways to use this. Number one, you could just simply put the student's name up at the top, uh, kind of like as an extra little fancy tag. Use it for gamification. So if you have a challenge to your students to do something um, in their video, to make something creative or to make, um, you know, something concise, what you could do is have kind of like a a class vote on it. I could see using something like a Google Forms survey and once they're done with all of their videos and the students have all gotten to watch then you put out this Google Forms survey or just a little pieces of paper and you know tally them up. Whoever wins gets that uh, kind of like that award put onto their video as a vibe. And then the other way to use it I think is kind of like what you see here in the, the screenshot on the Flipgrid website is just to tag it with things that, that you think um, really illustrate kind of like how you would describe that video and just seeing that unique word from students I think can be you know, a pretty motivating thing. So another thing that you can do with your Flipgrid videos now is that you can add these attachments. Now you've always been able to put on resources, or at least for a while you have, but now you've got the option to put on these attachments. And what an attachment basically is, is it's external links, you know, links to a Google Doc or... Robert Archer, Robert Archer, please contact Hertz, Renicar, you have their keys. Take your keys Robert, back, Robert, Robert. come on. I could almost see using Flipgrid kind of like the way that people use HyperDocs. You know, HyperDocs are these um, documents that, start, or sometimes people use slides to create them, and they're kind of like these big self-contained uh, lessons where you engage students at the beginning and give them an opportunity to explore information and then do something with it and share it with the class. And it's kind of like start to finish a self-contained, self-paced lesson. I could totally see doing this in a Flipgrid. 
So you, you add all of these attachments. Um, so, you know, add an attachment to a YouTube video to engage them and then a link to a Wikipedia article to gather some information and then a link to a template in Google Slides where they can add something, something to it. Anyway, by mashing all of that stuff together, I can see a lot of the same thing that people do with Hyperdocs being done in a Flipgrid topic. So I've heard people talk about, um, you know, Hyperdocs turning to Hyperslides. Um, using Adobe Spark, I've heard it called Hypersparks. I'm going to say maybe this is called Hyperflips. So doing hyper uh, Hyperdoc style lessons with, um, with Flipgrid. If you want more information on Hyperdocs, by the way, go to hyperdocs.co, and that has all sorts of templates and samples and resources for you. And the next thing I want to show you is, a, this is such a cool feature, um, you know, I'm a huge proponent of breaking down the four walls of our classroom and getting our kids connected to people and places and experiences all over the country and all over the world. Uh, a lot of times I talk about using Skype and Google Hangouts and video calls. Well, using Flipgrid to do this is a great way too. So Flipgrid has created this thing called Grid Pals. It's a teacher named Bonnie McClellan who kind of cooked up this idea and then now it's become reality. And basically once you update your profile within Flipgrid and you activate yourself on Grid Pals, you're added to one of these you know, green dots all over, you know, basically all over the United States and all over the world. And you can see, you know, it reaches all the way out into Europe and into South America and Australia and beyond. So what you can do from here is you can click on one of these grid pals and then reach out either through Facebook or through Twitter or whatever it is that they, they provide. Uh, reach out to them and say, hey, are you interested in doing some collaboration between our classes? So this is basically just like a matchmaking place where you can get connected with another class. So the next one has to do with creating your grids. And now in Flipgrid, they have emoji support for creating topics and creating grids. And so for me, what this means is, it means a couple of things. Uh, for one, we can create a topic, kind of like the one that you see here on the screen, and then just add some emojis to it. So personalization options, just kind of like injecting some fun into your lesson, that kind of thing. Um, you could totally do that with emojis. So there's that. But then, I think in addition to that, you know, there's, there's all of this brain research that talks about how when you blend images and text together that that's powerful and can help us to retain things for, for the long term. So I'm a huge fan of bringing images into pretty much anything that we can. So if you insert some of those emojis in with your, you know, into your topics, into your descriptions and so on, then just putting that kind of like verbal visual mix together, I mean, it can't hurt. And students love emojis. So just another way that you could use that. Now, if you're using a computer, like a laptop or a Chromebook or something, and you're wanting to know how you can, how exactly to add emojis, there's lots of ways to do it. I'm going to show you one of my favorites. I use this, um, I use this Chrome extension for my Google Chrome web browser called uh, Emojis for Chrome. And so all I did was I just add this to Google Chrome, and whenever I need to use it, I click on the extension and it pulls up all of these emojis I can choose from. Copy them from there, paste them into whatever I need to use them for in my web browser. So this is an easy way that you can add emojis to what you're doing. Okay, so the next one is a teeny tiny little addition, but I really like the potential for it. It's this idea called topic tips. So here's how topic tips work. Once you create a topic, either while you're creating it or if you want to hit the edit button, kind of like I just did, you'll notice in the details that you have this topic tip. You can add 64 characters to it. Now you can use this for a variety of things to encourage students to leave, kind of like what it says here, to, to leave their best answer to the topic. Now for me, I'm a big proponent of helping students learn how to improve their speaking skills. I don't think we can just turn them loose on Flipgrid and say, okay, now go talk. Now that's almost as fair as saying, we're gonna do a research paper, okay, now go write, without giving them any coaching, you know? So one of my favorite places to go for um, coaching when it comes to uh, speaking skills is to go to Eric Palmer's book, Well Spoken. And he has this framework called PV legs. And so PV legs stands for a variety of different things like poise, voice, and gestures, and speed, and 
So if we pick one of these things out, you know, like poise or gestures or speed or whatever, and we type one of those into our topic tip, I think by picking little suggestions on how to improve their speaking skills and putting them in there, that's an easy way that we can help kids with a real life skill, but not having to explicitly teach it. So the last thing I've got for you here has to do with replies. Uh, so whenever a student leaves a video on a topic, then they have the option to go to other people's videos and hit the reply button and leave them a little video reply based on what they had in their video. Now, this is something that isn't new, but when Flipgrid was acquired by Microsoft and all of the paid features came free, this is one of those features that now everybody has access to. It's not a premium feature anymore. I've kind of racked my brain on some, some creative ways that we could use them. There's tons of stuff out there. In fact, if you're really looking for ideas, uh, creative ideas on how to use Flipgrid, I suggest going to the Flipgrid Fever hashtag on Twitter. But for me, I could see this uh, being used in a couple of ways. One is for collaborative storytelling. So to do collaborative storytelling with Flipgrid, what I could see is a student records the beginning of a story. Now this could be something tied into something that you're already studying or just a, you know, a brand new kind of like creative writing type of thing. And so you start out a story in one video. Everybody does this. Everybody does their story starter and puts them in as videos, kind of like all of these videos right here. Then it's time for students to go to each other's videos and add to the story. So little by little adding something new to the story using replies. And so if we do that, then they click on the other student's video, add a reply. Then they can go to somebody else's video watch that video, listen to the reply, add the next piece to the story. So just continually adding those replies little by little by little, you get to see how the story morphs and changes. Then I could also see replies being used to do uh, class brain dumps. You know, brain dumps are this, you know, this very simple idea that to help us uh, study and to remember things long term, one of the best ways that we can do that is to do what's called retrieval practice. You know, the idea of trying to pull information out of our brains. And so a student does a brain dump in Flipgrid, puts it into a video, and then other students are able to go and look at each other's Flipgrid videos, use replies to add things to that brain dump that the first student didn't catch. So there you have it. There are some ways that we can use some of those new features in Flipgrid. So if you like this video, if it was useful to you, then be sure to like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that to catch up on all of the new videos that give you lots of practical ideas you can use in the classroom, just like this one. See you in the next video. You know, a variety of different things that we can coach kids on. Anybody going to Baltimore? They will not reopen. So you better get there.